<laughs> oh, it's Halloween season. I just couldn't resist. <laughs> okay, let's get serious now. Hello and welcome back to Create with Chidex. I'm Chidema and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I made a toady cake. Um, I got inspired to make this cake after I watched the Netflix movie, The Babysitter's Guide to Monster Hunting. It was really interesting. I found it really interesting. And if you love scary movies that are scary without being um, too traumatizing, then I recommend you watch this movie because it's really interesting. It has the right mix of scary, humor, fun, you know, all mixed in one. So, and I believe it's a movie that the whole family can enjoy. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you do, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel as it really helps me to reach more people and I appreciate your help. So let's get started. Here yeah, I've got my cake board with the cake support already in place. I have covered the threaded rod with both foil paper and um, link film. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to form my base with modeling chocolate. This modeling chocolate base will serve as an additional support for the cake. And also it will provide a rounded bottom that the toady cake needs. Now I'm placing a 4.5 inches cake card on top of the modeling chocolate. When constructing the cake support, I added some knots at the base of the rod to provide a more solid support for this cake cardboard. When the cake cardboard was in place, I continued forming the base of my cake by filling up the space underneath the cake cardboard with modeling chocolate. Don't worry too much about what it looks like now guys, how rough it looks. It's all gonna come together in the end, I promise. Trust in the process guys. <laughs> Now that I'm done adding the chocolate, I'm going to now smooth in and carve it. Remember that what we're going for for this base is a rounded bottom. So that's basically what I'm doing. The next process involved stacking the cakes. But before I did this, I had to put the structure in the fridge for about 10-15 minutes so that the chocolate base can harden. So here I'm just spreading some buttercream on the modeling chocolate base to help me glue down my first layer of cake. I'm just going to continue stacking up my cakes until all the cakes are stacked. So in between each layer I'll be putting buttercream like so. so for this toddy cake I used two six inches cakes in total. I split each one into two. After stacking the cakes, I'm going to crumb coat the sides with a very thin layer of buttercream before putting it in the freezer for 20 to 30 minutes to make it easier for me to carve. I printed some photos off the internet to help me make reference to them while carving. Here I'm just carving my cake. During the carving process and all through the entire cake process, I'm going to be making constant reference to the photos of the toady that I have by my side. I had to transfer the cake to a turntable to make the carving process easier for me. This is the cake after carving it. For the next step, I'm going to cover the entire surface of the cake with a thin layer of buttercream. Here I'm using my flexi smoother to smoothen the buttercream on the cake. Mm -hmm. 
After covering the cake with buttercream, I'll put it in the freezer for 20 to 30 minutes before I cover it with my modeling chocolate. While the cake was in the freezer, I started making the isomalt part of the toddy's eyes. And I'm using my measuring spoons to do this because I haven't got a mold. As you could see, I was covering the spoons with a light coat of vegetable fat. I'm using two different sizes of spoons here because the toddy's eyes are lopsided. One is bigger than the other. So I'm using the tablespoon for the big eye and the teaspoon for the small eye. I've melted some isomalt and I'm going to pour it inside the spoons. I'm going to leave the isomalt to cool completely before using a metallic skewer to gently pry it away from the spoons. Moving on to the next step, I colored and uh, rolled out some yellow modeling chocolate. The weather was a bit warm so my modeling chocolate was acting out. So that's why I decided to use the mat. Because of the warm weather, my modeling chocolate was still soft. So I decided to leave it to firm up for a bit before covering the cake. And that was a big mistake. <laughs> Wait for the disaster. <laughs> Look, it's ripped in different places. <laughs> I should have covered it in portions instead of covering it as a whole, especially because of the protruding uh, threaded rod. But never mind, I'm gonna fix this. Modeling chocolate is easier than fondant to smooth in because it pretty much wants to stick to itself. So I'm gonna fix it. I'll be using a mixture of tools to cut have and blend the modeling chocolate, adding more modeling chocolate in places and also removing as required. The tools I'll be using include a scissors, a paring knife, a fondant modeling tool as well as my hands. After carving and shaping the modeling chocolate, I wet my hands and rub them all over the surface of the modeling chocolate to further smoothen it. Although I didn't want to make it too smooth because the toadies are creatures with rough and dirty looking skin, so I wanted to maintain some of that roughness. Moving on to the features of the face, I started with the mouth. So I'm using my fondant tool here to mark out the outline for the mouth. Then I'll carve out the mouth using a paring knife. While I'm carving the mouth, I'm going to tell you a little about the toadies. So in the movie, the Grand Junior, aka the Boogeyman, wants to steal the little boy Jacob's gift of dreams. So he sends these toadies to snatch Jacob from his bedroom. The toadies are these weird looking but cute yellow, blue and green monsters that are very small and fat, with lopsided eyes, snuggly teeth and weird looking mouth and hair. They also love very shiny things, so you can bribe them with these. <laughs> when I had finished carving out the shape of the mouth, I attached some ivory colored modeling chocolate inside the mouth and made holes for the teeth in the gum area using my fondant too. It's not very visible from this angle, but here I'm just using my fondant tool to create sockets for the teeth in the upper gum.
Now I'm creating the teeth sockets for the lower gum as well. Then I'll add some lips with yellow modeling chocolate. Using my fondant tool, I'll try to join the lips to the face. But remember, like I said before, the toadies have rough looking skin, so I'm not going to be making any part of the skin totally smooth. For the toady's eyes, I'm using my fondant tool to make shallow wells in the eye area, one bigger than the other. Remember the toadies have lopsided eyes and one is bigger than the other. After creating the eye sockets, I rolled and cut out two thin circles of fondant and then I inserted them in the sockets. This particular toady has blue eyes, so I painted two blue circles on the white fondant and a small speck of black just at the center of each one. After the paint has dried, I'll place the isomalt eyes that I made earlier on in the sockets, then I'll make the folds around the eyes with yellow modeling chocolate. I would also make additional folds in the brow area using modeling chocolate as well. Here I'm making an additional fold just above the brow area. Then I'll start making the spikes on the head. So I'm passing the first one through the threaded rod. For subsequent ones, I'll attach the shorter spikes without support and then the longer ones with cake pop sticks. Now that I've finished making the spikes, I'll paint inside the mouth and the gums. So I'm painting with white, red, brown and black gel colors. So for in the inner mouth, I'm going to paint more of the red. And then for the gums, I'm mixing both the white, red and brown to give me a kind of pink color. Then I'm painting in between the lips and the gum black. This particular toady has an orange hue just around the eyes, the folds, the spikes and the lips. So I mixed some powdered red and yellow food color and then I'm using a soft brush to lightly dust this color in those areas. This also gave the cake some dimension.
this little guy currently looks weirder than usual without any teeth so I'm going to make him some teeth to make the teeth I'm using ivory colored modeling chocolate to mold those weird looking snaggling teeth then I'll insert them into the teeth sockets that I created earlier And there you have it, a toady monster cake. Now I'm gonna cut the cake. watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in my next video. Bye!